Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Sorensen. I'm the new lead climbing ranger for the Bighorn National Forest. I'm here to share with you the Eastern Wyoming Avalanche Information Exchange. So this new piece of technology has been developed by the Bridger Teton Avalanche Center and in coordination with the National Avalanche Center. Um, it's an exciting tool that will help uh, allow communities to collaborate and provide avalanche information um, and weather information to the public so we can recreate more safely in our snowy mountains. Um, so I'm going to do a quick screen share here and show you how to use the Eastern Wyoming Avalanche Information Exchange. Okay, so if you go to eyoavalanche.org, uh, that'll bring you to this site. Um, another quick plug here. So you can also get to this site by going to avalanche.org. This is a great site provided by the National Avalanche Center. Um, it's got a lot of education um, and a lot of good things to, to look at here, as well as every avalanche uh, center in the country will have their um, links to different avalanche uh, avalanche centers and their danger rating for the day. So in areas that don't have a danger rating, like the, the Wyoming, we're, Eastern Wyoming area, we're going to do these avalanche information exchanges. Um, so you can click here, uh, get more information, and that'll bring you to the Eastern Wyoming Avalanche Information Exchange. Um, this is a experimental website um, we're hoping to get community collaboration to help um, build better information about avalanches in these remote corners of Wyoming. So uh, when you first get to the site, you'll see uh, field observations. So this list over here is going to show all the field observations that have been submitted. Um, and you can filter these observations by clicking up here on the date tab. Uh, click you can do the past day, the past week, this season, um, past three days, past month, et cetera. Um, or you can pick your custom date by using the slider. So say I only want them in a certain period of time, use this slider to do that. All right, uh, over here on the right is the map. So this is showing any observations that have been submitted and they'll show up in this map. Any red dot, that's gonna be an avalanche observation. Any blue dot is a field observation. Any orange dot is a field observation that had uh, pertinent information. So cracking and collapsing, um, that's gonna turn your observation orange. Okay, so let's dig in a little deeper. Um, so an avalanche observation is gonna look like this. It'll have an observation summary. Um, it'll tell a little bit about the avalanche, avalanche um, how, how large it was, um, what aspect, uh, what slope angles it was on, what elevation, et cetera. So a user will, will put in this observation summary about that avalanche. Um, and you can provide a photo and uh, a little summary down here. So this was an avalanche, um, I think it was during a, a class that was at Antelope Butte ski area, and there was a number of little avalanches that occurred across the slope. Um, we're assuming those are natural. Okay. Uh, as far as a field observation, they're gonna look like this. So again, blue dots, um, a little observation summary, and whatnot. You can provide photos, etc. And I'll go a little bit more in depth in that in here in a minute. And uh, I orange dot, that's again an observation that has cracking or collapsing. Okay, so um, you can also filter these observations by um, avalanche observation or cracking collapsing by pressing those buttons up there. If I want to submit an observation, I go up here to this tab, observations, 
Um, if you click recent observations, that'll bring it back to this main page. If you hit submit observation, it'll give you this form to fill out. You're gonna to wanna to put in your name, phone number, email. Um, quick little side note, that information won't be shared with the public. Uh, that's just information that uh, will help in case we have a question about your observation or whatnot. So that won't be shared with the public. And that's, that's just your information. Um, you wanna put a location name. So anything, uh, a drainage or, or wherever, just needs some sort of name. And then you can click over on the map. So let's say zoom in and you can click exactly where that observation was. Uh, and then you can put in an observation date and which activity you were doing. So you're skiing, snowmobiling, climbing, etc. cetera. Um, signs of instability. So this is kind of the important stuff down here. Did we have recent avalanches? So that'd be a, kind of that type one data, recent avalanches, uh, big red flag there. So did we see recent avalanches? Yes or no? Uh, did you trigger that avalanche? Yes or no? Uh, was anyone caught? Yes or no? Um, moving down further, uh, you can put in uh, the observed avalanche information. So location, aspect, and elevation, those are kind of important stuff that you definitely want to get in there. Um, uh, how recent did it occur? What, what time or what, what day do you think that avalanche occurred? Was it natural or triggered? Um, was anyone caught the size, width, and depth? Um, just estimates, estimations are okay there, um, but try to get accurate information if you have any information available. Um, in this field notes section, so that's gonna be down at the bottom, you can tell a little bit more of a story about the avalanche, um, what signs of instability we had, uh, any snowpack tests that we did that day? Um, how, how did we interact with that train that day? Any weather observations? Was it super windy? Um, was there a rapid warm up in temperatures and overall impression of stability for, for future avalanches? So those are, are your field notes that you could provide with your, your avalanche. Um, these are just recommended um, things to throw in here. So you can just tell a story about that avalanche. Um, photos, so you can submit a, a photo to your avalanche observation. You can have it in JPEG or PNG. I'd say JPEG is probably the easiest. Just click add a photo, navigate to wherever that photo is and submit it there. And as well as a video. So you can do YouTube, Instagram, uh, whatever just provide the URL in this uh, section and that video should upload. When you're all done, you hit submit and it'll be submitted to the Bridger Teton Avalanche Center. And uh, there will be a little bit of a lag for it to come on the website, but um, within a, an hour or two, it should pop up on, on this website. Um, so moving back to the main site, uh, if we, uh, some other, other cool tools. So you can, you can click up here on this weather tab, um, down here, weather stations. So this is showing all the snow tell sites um, in the Bighorns, or if you scroll down here, you can see the Medicine Bow National Forest. Um, so the, the snowies in Sierra Madre down there. Um, so any snow tell sites, uh, green snowtail sites, that's that's a regular snowtail site without a wind data, and blue are going to show you some more wind data. So let's say we want to go to, and, and you also have webcams here, so the little camera that's showing your, your webcam. Uh, zoom in a little bit more. If I click on a snowtail, it'll show me this graph, so um, and it'll show me this this table at first. Up here on the top in the shaded box is the averages. So this, when you first click in, it'll, it'll go to 24 hours. So uh, this is the 24 hour average. 
And then if you scroll down here, you can see um, hour by hour data. Um, it's gonna show you the temperature, the precip accumulation, and this little triangle, that means change. So change in precip in the last 24 hours. Uh, snow water equivalents, so SWE, that's if you took the, the snow and you melted it down, how much water you'd get out of that snow. Um, this is change in snow water equivalent. The snow height, so on these snow tail sites, there's telemetry. It'll show you the, the depth of snow or the this height of the snow and any changes in snow height that you had. You can also do a custom date range. So this is the last week. So that he has updated the averages in the last, last uh, seven days. You can scroll down and get hour by hour data there. You can also do a custom date by using this calendar. You can see this data graphically. Uh, this is a, be a good tool to, to kind of look at trends over time. Um, so we got air temp, all that same, same data, precip accumulation, snow water equivalents, and seeing change over time. Cool, so that's a regular snow tell, tight, snow tell site. Um, if you click on a blue snow tell site, let's go to Mill Creek here. This is gonna show you a little bit more of the weather data. So these, these snow tells have um, uh, relative humidity and wind data associated with them. So um, we've got, again, it's gonna show you 24 hours when you first come in here. This is the average up top, um, temperature, relative humidity, wind speed, gust wind speeds, average over the last hour. That's what these are. And this is the last 24 hours. And the degrees, uh, so direction that that wind was blowing from and precip accumulation and change in precip. Um, you can also view this data in over time in a graphical fashion. So we got air temp, relative humidity. And as I scroll, you can see it changes the date. Uh, this is showing you the wind speed and direction. Those arrows are showing you the directions, um, precip accumulation, et cetera. Um, down here are the wind, wind roses. So um, up here, this is showing a wind rose of the current hour. So the direction of wind, what it's been blowing currently. And then down here at the bottom is the last 24 hours. Um, or I think if you change, so let's say if you go to seven days, yeah, it's showing over that seven days, this has been the average. And this would be the last week. Um, or last day. Okay. So really good information on those snow tell sites. That's how you get to those. Um, okay, going back to our main site. Another cool tool, if you click up here on weather, you can get the weather forecast by clicking right in here. Um, click on the zone that you would like to go to. So say I wanna to go to the Western side of the Bighorns. This is gonna bring you to the National Weather Service map uh, or to the National Weather Service forecast. Um, it's gonna be a point forecast. So you can see right here, it's giving you a, a lot long of that point. So it's kind of averaging in this uh, 8,000 foot zone on the west side of the Bighorns and give you a detailed forecast for um, the next week. So you can read these to be good information uh, if you're gonna go out into the mountains to know what the weather is. Um, another couple of good tools that I like to use from the, the National Weather Service. If you click here, you can get an hourly weather forecast. So I can, I can see it um, hour by hour. You can see a cool graph. Um, you got windshield, dew point temperatures, surface winds. This is showing you forecasted wind directions of the surface, um, relative humidity uh, and precip potentials um, and sky cover. So those are all good graphs to kind of give you an idea of what, what might be happening in the future. Um, 
as well as this right here, this rain. This will show you how much water is expected to come in a certain time frame and snow. So how much snow we're, we're expecting to get out of a certain snow snowstorm. Uh, okay, going back, uh, you can also view all that data in a table as well. And then another good thing would be this forecast discussion. I like to read these forecast discussions. They're just going to give you general overview of what's going on uh, as far as uh, storms and et cetera. Okay. So, yeah, that's the Eastern Wyoming Avalanche Information Exchange. I hope you guys use this tool. I think it'll be really helpful for a community and uh, have safe um, travel when you're out in the backcountry. If you have any questions, you can email me at ryan.sorensen at usda.gov. Thank you. Have a good day.